Hi, my name is Jonathan, and this is my GMO research project for my biotechnology course at UConn. Today, I'm going to be talking about the bioengineered rainbow papaya. The prompt for creating a GMO papaya was the papaya ring spot virus, abbreviated PRSV. This virus first appeared on commercial farms in 1992 in Pune, Hawaii, and ravaged through the entire papaya industry here. It was spread by insects feeding on the fruit, and it affected both young and old trees, as they could not recover, could not produce fruit, and anything that was produced had this very characteristic ring spot on it, which was not safe for human consumption. This dropped papaya production in Hawaii by nearly 20 million pounds from 1992 to 1997. One of the first solutions proposed to beat the ring spot virus was cross protection. This involved injecting a mild strain of the virus into the papaya and allowing the fruit to develop resistance, essentially creating a papaya ring spot vaccine. This did work on a small scale, but it was abandoned because it did not cover complete resistance to specific strains of the virus. Just injecting the mild strain was not enough for the papaya to develop complete resistance to the virus. Some non-GMO solutions were proposed as well, such as relocating to a different island to avoid the virus. However, this ultimately failed because wherever the fruit went, the insects followed and transmitted the virus. Another solution proposed was insecticides to reduce the transmission itself. If you're able to knock out the insects, you could stop spreading the virus. However, the insects develop resistance to the insecticides and it risks the health of fruit and farmers to use insecticides on this wide of a scale. So then Dr. Dennis Gonzalez came along. He was a plant pathologist and he's credited with actually creating the GMO rainbow papaya with his team. He looked at the past solutions proposed and then looked at the GMO tobacco and tomatoes that were made resistant against the tobacco mosaic virus. He used this as a model to create the GMO papaya. And this model involved transformation, which is a genetic engineering technique where external genetic material, in this case the external is coming from the virus itself, is inserted and incorporated into a host cell, which would be the papayas, which affects the genomes of the papayas. Dr. Gonzalez isolated the PRSV code protein gene from the virus itself and could insert this into the genome of the papayas, creating resistance. This is the actual transformation vector for the PRSV code protein. The method to perform this transformation is called high-speed particle bombardment. And while it looks quite complex from this picture, it is essentially using this apparatus called a gene gun to shoot the PRSV code protein gene into the papaya. And this was done successfully, creating 17 transformed plants, which was named the Sun Up Papaya. So the Sun Up Papaya successfully was resistant to the disease, but Dr. Richard Manchart wanted to improve this by creating more of them. He inbred the Sun Up plants and created a line of the reddish pink papaya that were all resistant to the disease. While this was successful, the papaya industry wanted a yellow fruit, of course. This was due to lots of anti-GMO sentiments at the time. People didn't want to eat a papaya that looked foreign, aka reddish pink, so they wanted something that was more in line with the traditional fruit. By crossing the Sana papaya with the Kapoho papaya, which was actually non-GMO, Manchar created the F1 hybrid rainbow papaya. And this was also resistant to PRSV, and more importantly, it was yellow, so the industry was satisfied. There's been lots of research done into the methodology of the PRSV resistant papaya, but overall it's viewed very favorably in the industry. And according to Dr. Gonzalez himself, without GMOs, there's no papaya industry, simple as that. It's really revolutionized the fruit and made it sustainable for the future. Even though Hawaii is actually not a major producer of papaya, all the work that was done to save it from the ring spot virus allows countries like India and Brazil to produce many, many metric tons of it every year now. And as we can see here, over 90% of papayas are genetically modified today, showing how common they are in the industry. And 14 million metric tons of the fruit were produced in 2020, showing that it's still very successful. And finally, I just wanted to go over some misinformation here about uh, genetically modified papayas. Doing research, it was pretty easy to find articles like this that said how to choose a papaya that's not genetically modified. This was from One Green Planet. This little excerpt that I've taken has one sentence that's just very misinformed, and it says, All we are able to do now is draw upon research that has been done to show GMOs are overall smart to avoid because we're not able to tell exactly how they're produced. That is just not true. As I went over, this is a very well-studied method, high-speed particle bombardment and transformation itself. All you're taking is the virus uh, genetic material, injecting it, and allowing the host cells to produce resistance on their own. Saying that we're not 
able to tell how they're produced is just very uh, misinformed statement. And it's kind of persuading people to be uh, fearful of GMOs, which is not safe. 90% of the fruit today is genetically modified, which shows how well studied this is. And overall, I hope misinformation like this doesn't happen as much in the future. Thank you for listening, and I hope you choose the GMO papaya.